Heavenly Father, we thank you for a development for leaders tonight. We pray, Lord, that you grant every one of us understanding in your word in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down tonight. We want to look at the subject of the atonement. Atonement. Atonement by the blood of the Lamb. It was in the Old Testament. In fact, there are many references to the atonement in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, we have the atonement. As you look at Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Very clear. And this verse summarizes everything. And the Lord says, He gives the blood to make atonement for the souls of men. For the children of Israel, they killed a lamb. They killed a goat. They killed an animal as they were directed. And the blood was applied and it made an atonement, a covering, a forgiveness, a pardon for the sins of the people. We come to the New Testament in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in verse 9, it says, Much more than being now justified, by his blood. You see that? By the blood of the Lamb. It says we shall be saved from wrath through him. As you connect all that together, sinners are under the wrath of God, the anger of God, the indignation of God. But well, because the Lord God of heaven does not want us to perish under his anger, he sent the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God God himself, and then he became man, but a perfect man, a sinless man, a spotless man. He didn't have any sin to atone for, but we had sins that should be forgiven, that should be cleansed, and the just died for the unjust, the sinless died for the sinful, the perfect died for the perfect one. No other person could make that atonement for the whole of the world. The atonement we read of in the Old Testament was for the children of Israel. Now it goes beyond the children of Israel. For the rest of the world, Christ, the sinless one, the perfect one, shed his blood for us. And it says much more than being now at this time or not justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Through him, he tells us in verse 10. In verse 10, it says, oh, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. The death, he died by crucifixion, you understand? And he shed his blood, and that blood through the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. As we talk about the atonement, you are talking of salvation. You talk about the atonement, you are talking about the removal of the wrath of God, of the punishment for sin away from those who believe on the Lord. As you talk about atonement, you are talking about appeasement because there had been enmity between man and God and nothing could appease God turn his thrust away, turn his anger away, but the substitution that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that he did for us and now we're reconciled. He says we shall be saved by his life. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 for, and not only so, not only that we're saved from wrath, he says but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, this is very important, 
by whom we have now received the atonement, the pardon, the appeasement, the reconciliation, the redemption, and the togetherness with God. We now receive that by the atonement of Christ. Tonight we're looking at the message, atonement by the blood of the Lamb. We divide the message to three parts. Number one, we're looking at the all-sufficiency of the atonement by Christ. All sufficiency. We don't need any other any other thing to add we don't need any other thing to do that atonement is all sufficient number two the benefits in the atonement for all creatures all creatures that's why you remember after his resurrection he had made the atonement he had shed the blood and the blood had been accepted by the heavenly father he said now go tell everyone go and preach the good news, the gospel, the glad tidings to every creature because the atonement had been made for every creature. Number two, the benefits in the atonement for all creatures. Number three, we're looking at the consequence of the atonement on the cross. He did it on the cross and now we have the consequence of that. What that has done, the consequence in the might of God, the consequence in the might of the believer, the result, the consequence in the lives of the people that are now redeemed and the atonement has been made for them. Have you noticed what we are doing today? Number one, A. Number two, B. Number three, C. A, B, C. The all-sufficiency of the atonement by Christ and B, the benefits in the atonement for all creatures. Number three, the consequence of the atonement on the cross. We're looking at number one. Number one, we're looking at the all sufficiency. Nothing to add, nothing to subtract. It solves all our problems, all our spiritual problems, all problems for this time, all problems until death, until we leave the earth, the planet earth. All problems till we get to heaven. The atonement of Jesus Christ has supplied a solution for them all. The all sufficiency of the atonement by Christ. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 53 and reading from verse 4. It says in Isaiah 53, verse 4 Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him Tricking, smitten of God and afflicted. In verse 5, it says, But he was wounded, he, the Christ, the Lamb, the one that was yet to come. But because the plan of our salvation and of the atonement had been made in heaven, and it was revealed to Isaiah the prophet, he said, It is sure Christ is coming in the Lamb of God that will take the sins of the world away and surely surely it will happen he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and uh, with his tribes were healed. There's forgiveness in that atonement. There is peace in that atonement. And there is uh, purity in that atonement. There is acceptance in that atonement. It is true that atonement were accepted by the Heavenly Father, the Holy God, accepting the blood of Jesus Christ for sinful, unrighteous men as were repent and believe there is healing in that atonement by stripes were healed there is deliverance in that atonement there is the cancellation of the curse of the law in that atonement look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says i want you to look at uh, you know that verse very well the beginning word 
all and the final word all and then it says everyone in the middle so you understand the atonement that Jesus Christ made at the beginning of the sentence for all people at the end of the sentence for all people in the middle for everyone so there is no doubt about the sufficiency and the extent of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ look at the verse now all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all in Romans chapter 3 reading from verse 23 Romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God verse 24 in verse 24 being justified freely we don't pay anything he paid each all our tears our sorrows are rolling on the ground our penance punishing ourselves for whatever we have done all that does not contribute anything to the atonement of Christ being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus verse 25 it says whom God has set for to be a propitiation a sacrifice an atonement through faith in his blood to to declare his righteousness for the remission for the forgiveness removal for the redemption remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God in verse 26 it says to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus the all-sufficiency of the atonement by Christ look at three things here in number one the sufficient atonement for all in Israel number two the Savior's atonement for all in the world number three the sure atonement for all penitents by faith look at number one number one is the sufficiency of atonement for all in Israel in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 16 Leviticus chapter 16 verse 16 and he shall make an atonement for the uh, holy uh, for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of the transgressions in all their sins and so shall be shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness verse 17 it tells us and it says and there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goes in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made look at this an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. The atonement that the high priest made was for all, for everyone. It means that the road was very clear now. The door was open now. Any sinner can come, repent, and turn away from the sin. And that general atonement then will atone for them in verse 34 in verse 34 it says and they shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year an atonement for Israel all of Israel for all their sins once a year and he did as the Lord commanded Moses we come to 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 
29, reading from verse 23. 2 Chronicles 29, verse 23, it says, And they brought forth the he goats for the sin offering before the king and the congregation, and they laid their hands on them. On the sacrifice, they laid their hands on them, confessing their sins, transferring their sin upon those sacrificial animals. In verse 24, verse 24 says, And the priest killed them, those uh, sacrifices, and they made reconciliation with their blood, the blood of the sacrifice sacrifices upon the altar to make look at this an atonement for all Israel to make an atonement for all Israel no one was left out without the atonement the wrath of God rested upon every one of them now the atonement took the wrath of God away from everyone and salvation was made available forgiveness was made available for everyone for all and then it goes on to say for the king commanded that the bunch of and the sin offering shall be made for all Israel. And it was sufficient for all of Israel in um, Exodus chapter 32, reading from verse 30. Exodus chapter 32, verse 30. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Paraventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. An atonement for sin. Where there's no sin, there's no need for atonement. It is the presence of sin. It is uh, the, uh, the sin in the lives of the people that will expose them to the danger and the damnation and the punishment. It's the sin that necessitated the atonement. But look at this. It says, I will make atonement for your sin. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have I've seen a great sin. He went back to God. This is the atonement he wanted to make for them. He wanted to plead for them that God will forgive them. And the atonement was to be for everyone. It says they've seen a great sin and they have made God so gold. Verse 32. In verse 32, yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, Blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Look at verse 33. Verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. We learn something here. Atonement did not confer automatic forgiveness, automatic salvation to every Israelite. Atonement does not confer salvation, forgiveness automatically for everyone now. You see, the Lord said, you make the atonement that opens the way that everyone who comes repenting will be forgiven. Make atonement for all Israel, but Nadab and Abihu died. The atonement did not work for them. Because if we deliberately sin after the atonement has been made, or because atonement has been made, the law will still catch up on us and there will still be judgment. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did not escape the judgment of God just because atonement had been made for all Israel. We still have the responsibility that we have to repent. The ten spies that came and they spoke evil concerning the land of promise and they discouraged the people of Israel from going on to the land of promise. 
they died without getting to the land of promise. Why? Because the atonement just makes the way that anyone who will repent, the wrath of God has been a peace for the whole nation. And now you can come and uh, repent and believe. In that atonement, there is still a personal responsibility after the atonement had been made. Let's come to number two here. Number two is the Savior's atonement for all in the world. Everyone in the world. We're looking at Isaiah again, chapter 53. I'm reading from verse 4. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted look at verse 5 in verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are Healed. With his stripes, we are healed now. Jesus Christ made the provision for the salvation of everyone, for all. But everyone still has a personal responsibility to come and turn from sin and believe on the Lord. Judas Iscariot did not make use of that privilege, and the Lord warned him. The atonement, the atonement does not automatically bring forgiveness and bring salvation to the sinful. We must still repent of our sin. All those uh, Pharisees said, uh, the Lord said, they closed their eyes. They closed their hearts and they closed their ears that I will not, that they will not be converted and they will not be healed. Say Korah, he said uh, Korazin and all those places where he did so marvelous great works. He said it will be more terrible for Sodom and Gomorrah, for Tyre and Sidon, than for thee. Because the Lord came. He is going to make the atonement, but they didn't accept the atonement. They didn't have the personal repentance and personal faith. Because of that, they will suffer in hell fire. It said you have been lifted up to heaven by the privileges you have and by the atonement I'm making, but you reject. And because they rejected, they will still not benefit from that atonement. The atonement is for all. It's for everyone. Whosoever will may come. But if they didn't come, if they didn't repent, the atonement will not avail for them. Look at verse 6 here. In verse 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all souls. That's the possibility of being saved by everyone because the Lord God of heaven has laid the iniquity of all us all upon him. But now Paul the apostle told the Jews, he said, because you judge yourself unworthy of eternal life, we go to the Gentiles. They judge themselves unworthy. They counted themselves out. They remained in tradition. They didn't come to repent and bow before the Lord. Because of that, they perished even though the Lord has made the atonement for everyone. I want you to look at uh, First John chapter 2. We're looking at verse 2. First John chapter 2. We're looking at uh, verse 2. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. That, that's the atonement for all. And that atonement is sufficient for everyone. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3 here, it's telling us about what he has done and how
how it avails for everyone, everyone that will repent, everyone that will come. In verse 3, it says, Hereby we do know that we know him if there's still a condition. If we keep his commandments, then in verse 4, in verse 4, it tells us very well, it says, He that says, I know him and keep it not. His commandment is a liar. The one who says atonement has been made, he has to atone for our sins, and they continue in their sins, and they say, I am saved. How do you know you are saved? Christ made atonement for everyone, and I'm part of that everyone. Have you repented? Don't talk about that. Have you had personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Don't talk about that. He says, if you don't keep his commandment, he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you don't take that step, then you say you are in him, you are a liar, and the truth is not in him. It tells us in verse 5. In verse 5, it tells us, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily truly sincerely surely is the love of god perfected hereby we know that we are in him look at chapter 5 chapter 5 we're looking at verse 18 in chapter 5 it says we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not that's the result that's the outcome of the fact that you believe in the atonement and you believe in the blood that Jesus Christ has shed for you. And now, because you believe, you repent, you believe, you are born of God. God and then you do not continue in sin you don't have the idea he has atoned for my sin past present future and the atonement gives me license and gives me liberty to go on sinning he said no that if a man whosoever is born of God is sinneth not but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not the wicked one cannot force him is the devil he does something wrong is the devil he said uh, you know he say i'm born again but the devil is the one that is walking out that means the devil is living inside that person and the devil is controlling him if he's born again, if the atonement of Christ has availed for him, he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him. Not look at verse 19. It says in verse 19, we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. For the whole world, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, of the whole world. But it's only those people in the world that go to Christ that will have that atonement availing for them. But the whole world at the time of John, many years after Calvary, the whole world lies in wickedness. Verse 20, in verse 20 it says, and we know that the Son of God is come and he has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Even in the Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Those who believe, they are the people that have eternal life. That's why it says in verse 21, in verse 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Don't get to the error of saying, whether we keep on worshiping idols or not, it doesn't matter. Christ has made the atonement for us, and the atonement covers everything, everyone. Therefore, we repent, we don't repent, we're righteous, we're not righteous. The blood, efficacious or not efficacious on us, we are saved. He said, no. He says, little children, keep yourselves from idol. And everybody said... Amen. We're coming to number three here. Number three here, the sure atonement, sure 
definite, the sure atonement for all penitents. All, all those who repent and then they have faith in the Lord. Look at John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth he lost the whole world and is asking that they will believe because the atonement becomes real, efficacious, effective on those who believe. It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world the whole world through him might be saved atonement available for everyone that the whole world might be saved look at the next verse there uh, we get into problems we get into error when we read part of the word and we don't continue verse 18 he that believeth on him is not condemned he that believeth on him is not condemned it's not like unilateral universal atonement whether we believe or we don't believe the lord will not condemn those who do not, those who believe, it's not a universal sin, no condemnation. Christ has come to save and Christ has not come to condemn. Look at this, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil and that's telling us the necessity of personal repentance personal hatred for sin personal fleeing and running away from sin personal a demarcation between you and sin and having faith in the lord jesus christ for the atonement which is for all to avail and to prevail and to be effective in your life. It tells us in Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 14. Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. In verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That, that's the, uh, the human part. That's the human responsibility. That Christ, yes, he'll, he'll die for the sins of the whole world. He'll make atonement for the sin of everyone. But now, personal responsibility. Before salvation becomes personal, repent ye and believe the gospel. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 20. In Acts chapter 20, verse 20, and now it says, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I have showed you and I have taught you publicly and from house to house. Verse 21, it says, testify fine both to the Jews and also to the Greeks number one repentance toward God atonement has been made Christ has died Christ has shed his blood and that blood can wash away all sins not automatic 
it says there's repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ we're looking in a point number two here point number two the benefits in the atonement for all creatures the benefits in the atonement in Leviticus chapter 17 reading from verse 11 Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you everyone upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls in the plural everyone for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul it is the blood that maketh atonement for the souls in romans chapter 5 reading from verse 8 romans chapter 5 verse 8 for god commendeth his love towards us everyone in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us for everyone in verse 9 it says much more than being now justified by his blood the works of our hand will not justify us all our efforts will not justify us the atonement is necessary for everyone before he can be justified we shall be saved from wrath through him and then in verse 10 verse 10 says for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and then in verse 11 it says and not only so but we also joy rejoice in god through our lord jesus christ by whom we have now in this life now after repentance and faith in the lord after being born again now we have now received the atonement the benefits in the atonement for all creatures look at three things we we'll consider number one salvation and healing as benefits in the atonement number two sanctification and holiness through the blood of his atonement number three spiritual fullness and heavenly hope for believers in the atonement number one salvation and healing as benefits in the atonement acts chapter 4 reading from verse 9 in acts chapter 4 verse 9 if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man the healing by what means he is made whole healed perfectly healed look at verse 10 in verse 10 be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you healed whole perfectly sound it, 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 the atonement of jesus christ by those stripes that blood brought a blood out of his body by those stripes were healed there's healing in the atonement look at verse 11 in verse 11 they said the stone which was set at naught of you builders which is become the hedge of the corner in verse 12 verse 12 says neither is there salvation vision in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved there's salvation in that atonement of christ there's healing deliverance in that atonement of christ in uh, psalm 103 looking at it from verse 3 it says who forgiveth all thine iniquities how could he do that because he paid it all he paid the price he made the atonement who healed all thy diseases the healing the salvation everything in the atonement of the of the lamb look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says 
as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. That's salvation. The salvation in the atonement is healing in the atonement. Now, the healing is in the atonement, but if we're sick, do we just keep quiet, shut our mouth, and then fold our hands? He has made the atonement for my healing. No, we pray, we ask him. If somebody has backsliding, he says, well, he has made atonement for all my sins and every sin I will ever commit. Does he fold his hand and close? No, he must confess. He must come to God in Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 30. Seven Ezekiel 36 verse 37 thus says the Lord God I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them I will increase them with men like a flock it says we must still pray we must still repent we must still believe on him so that we're not taking the atonement for granted he has done it he has done it if that if somebody keeps quiet like that it will die as a sinner it will die as a backslider and then when he goes to the other side it will spend eternity in the lake of fire forever and ever and then you say but they said he made atonement for everyone of us. They said that he made the atonement and forgiveness was available and restoration was available and uh, purity was available yes, for the people that ask, for the people that return unto the Lord, for the people that repent of their sins and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and as a result of that personal responsibility then the salvation comes the restoration comes and uh, the healing comes as well we're looking at number two here number two is sanctification and holiness through the blood of his atonement we look at uh, hebrews chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 14 hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified after we are saved we need perfection we need purification we need purging we need an internal work of grace second work of grace and everything has been covered by the blood of the lamb look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days says the lord i will put my laws into their hearts and their and into their minds will i write them look at verse 17 verse 17 says and their sins and their iniquities will i remember no more verse 18 in verse 18 now where remission removal forgiveness redemption of these is there is no more offering for sin verse 19 in verse 19 having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus because of the blood not the works of my hand not the tears on my face will appease the Lord but because of the blood of Jesus we have the assurance we have the boldness to enter into the presence of God and then it takes away the sins in the plural salvation it takes away the root of sin it takes away the depravity because Christ paid each all. We're looking at chapter 13 of that same Hebrews and we're reading from verse 12. It says, Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. It is that blood of atonement that sanctifies us. He said that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. He suffered without the gate in verse 13. 
let us go forth therefore unto him we have the responsibility yes the blood had been shed for our sanctification but if we discover that depravity is still there if we discover that the tendency propensity to sin in is still there if we discover that it's like this and there is a human sin on the inside that is still drawing us and temptation is looking attractive what we should do is to run to calvary and run to the lord it says let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach in verse 14 it says for here have we no continuing city but we seek one to come because we're seeking the heavenly city and the heavenly habitation that's what makes the sanctification very important the cleansing from sin the purging from sin and taking everything about sin away from our lives because we seek the country the city to come look at verse 20 in verse 20 he tells us now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood you see that is through the blood of the everlasting covenant verse 21 it says make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom the glory forever and ever amen we're looking at hebrews hebrews uh, chapter 10 uh, chapter uh, 9 uh, from verse 14 hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 uh, how much more shall the blood of christ remember that's the blood of atonement where christ atoned for every sin uh, that we have uh, committed and even the inbred sin uh, the atonement covers everything it says how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god and then he tells us in verse 15 in verse 15 and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions were, that were under the false testament it says they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance look at verse 22 in verse 22 and almost all things about the law purged with blood purged with blood our pardon through the blood a forgiveness through the blood a salvation through the blood a purifying through the blood our holiness through the blood our sanctification through the blood almost all things are by the lord poured your blood and without shedding of blood is no remission without the shedding of blood there's no remission look at verse 27 in verse 27 it says as it's appointed unto men wants to die but after this the judgment is appointed unto men wants to die after this the judgment but jesus christ came and he died on our behalf and he bore the punishment on our behalf and we personally individually go to god we see the presence of sin in our lives then we go to him and we point to that presence of sin we see the power of sin dominating us and we're not able to set ourselves free we point that to him we see the pollution of sin pervading all our lives and we go to him and we say the presence of sin is here the power of sin is operating here the pollution of sin i feel it is so dirty 
and we take ourselves to the Lord and then his death, his blood will avail for us. But if not, it's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. And then in verse 28, and it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin, without the sin offering. It's not going to come in to make a sacrifice again without the sin offering unto salvation. We come to number three here. Number three, spiritual fullness and heavenly hope for believers in the atonement in Galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 2 it says this only what I learn of you received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith of course by faith by faith by faith in the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 13 verse 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for each is written because said is everyone that hangeth on a tree verse 14 in verse 14 that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith through faith it is through faith in what he has done. It is the atonement that opened the way for everything we're going to have from God through Christ. Salvation, yes, through Christ. Sanctification, yes, through Christ. Holy Ghost baptism, yes, through Christ. The gifts of the Spirit, yes, through Christ. The fullness of the power of the Spirit through Christ until we come to the mention of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Everything we have uh, through the blood that is shed for us in John chapter 16, uh, reading from verse 7. John chapter 16, verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. How did he go away? How did he depart? Through the cross, through Calvary. In departing to heaven, he had to go through Calvary. He had to shed his blood. He had to make the atonement. Everything is through that atonement. Then he says in verse 8, in verse 8, and when he is come, when the Holy Ghost has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Why? I thought, you know, he has already made atonement for the sin of the world. Yes, the Holy Ghost will come and reprove the the world of sin so that there'll be conviction, there'll be confession, there'll be conversion. It is the personal responsibility of everyone after he has departed, after he has made the atonement that will be convicted of sin by the Spirit of God and we come personally and we confess before we can be converted, it shows that the atonement is not automatic. You must take the necessary step. He says he'll convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In verse 9 it says of sin because they believe not on me. In verse 10 it says of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Verse 11 it says of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Then in verse 12, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. After the atonement, and then you realize your shortcoming and your limited insight into the word of God, because of the atonement, you'll go to God and the Spirit will come to enlighten you. Atonement, because of his atonement, 
one made the door now will be open the gate will be open for everything we need from Christ in verse 13 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak because uh, for he will show you things to come he tells us in first peter chapter one reading here from verse three first peter chapter one verse three blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, and that mercy became available because Jesus Christ shed his blood, he paid the price, and he reconciled us to God. He opened the way unto the heavenly Father, and that now that mercy can come from the Father because of the atonement. He says, because of his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, in verse 4 it says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Verse 5, it says, So I catch by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, but I see which has called you is holy because we are going to heaven and that demands holiness follow peace uh, with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord because we are going to heaven and blessed are the pure in heart, the holy in heart because those are the people that will see the Lord who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in a holy place, the people that have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up their soul unto vanity but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation verse 16 because it is written be ye holy for i am holy verse 18 in verse 18 for as much as she know that she was not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation and received by tradition from your fathers verse 19 but with the precious blood of Christ. Everything depends on the blood is shed, the blood of the atonement. It says by the with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We're coming to point number three here. Point number three, we're looking at the consequence, the consequence of the atonement on the cross. The atonement on the cross. In Second Chronicles chapter 29, reading from verse 5. Second Chronicles chapter 29 verse 5, and said unto them, hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Now you understand, sanctify yourselves. Uh, when we say sanctify, there are times uh, the word is used, sanctify, set yourself apart. But now, it tells us a deeper meaning of that word sanctify. It says sanctify the house of the Lord. And then it says carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. That sanctuary already was set apart, sanctified. But then there was filthiness in that holy place. And the sanctification of that holy place, there is the outer court there is the holy place there is the holy of holies now the sanctified there now is to carry for those things out fill these things out of the holy place it tells us in verse 15 in verse 15 it says and 
day. And they gathered their brethren and they sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord. The commandment of the king by the words of the Lord. The king is not just allowed to make, you know, his opinion a commandment. His own ideology a commandment. The words of the Lord, the commandment of the king to cleanse the house of of the Lord. In verse 16, cleanse the house of the Lord. What does that mean? And the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness inside that holy place, inside that inner part that they found and to remove of uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, in the temple of the Lord and into the court of the house of the Lord and the Levites took it, carried it out abroad into the brook Kidron and so that's what the Lord does for us when he sanctifies us he takes out of our inner man out of the inner part out of the spirit and soul he takes those unclean things away from there verse 23 in verse 23 it says and they brought forth the uh, he goat and the sin offering therefore the king and the congregation uh, the congregation and delayed their hands upon them in verse 24 in verse 24 and the priests killed them that is those animals and they and they made reconciliation with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement to make an atonement uh, the atonement is very wide it takes those so clean things away from the inner court and it says they made that an atonement for all Israel for the king commanded that the bond offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel all Israel in first John chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 1 first John Chapter 2, verse 1, my little children, these things right tie unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Look at verse 2. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins, the atonement that he made for sins, and not for our hours only. But also for the sins of the whole world in verse 3, verse 3, 6, and hereby uh, do, we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. After benefiting from the atonement, this is now what is required of us. He empowers, he regenerates us, he changes us, and he gives us the power to go and sin no more. And then in verse 4, it says, he that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Verse 5, verse 5 says, But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. In verse 6, he that says, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. The consequence of the atonement on the cross. We're looking at three things here. Number one, number one, crucifixion of self through his atonement on the cross. Number two, is the crushing of the serpent by his atonement at Calvary. Number three, commission for saints to announce the atonement of Christ. Look at number one. Number one is the crucifixion of self through his atonement on the 
cross. It tells us in Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I to the world. The world is crucified unto me. There's nothing between me and the world anymore. The world that crucified Christ, that world is crucified unto me and I am crucified to that world. It tells us in Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 there, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans chapter 6, we're looking at verse 6. In Romans chapter 6, verse 6, knowing this, that our old man, the root of sin, our old man, the one that pushes us to sin, our old man, the inbred sin, the inward weakness, propensity there, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That's the purpose of God for the atonement, for the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary that the very root of sin, the body of sin, the source of sin, the energy of sin from within might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Henceforth, we should not serve sin. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 of that same chapter 6, being then made free from sin, free from sin, by the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, he sets us free. Being then made free from sin, he became the servant of righteousness. Verse 22, in verse 22, but now being made free from from sin and free from sinning. He says, and become the servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Point number two here. Number two is crushing, the crushing of the serpent by the atonement at Calvary. Colossians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. In verse 15, verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it because of the cross. Now principalities and powers, their powers are broken. Their plans are destroyed against our lives because of the atonement. And if we come to the Lord and we acknowledge the atonement, the power of the atonement, the provision of the atonement, then all those principalities and powers will not have any effect upon our lives. In Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 14, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, for as much as uh, the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. He became man so that he will carry all our problems away that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. And then in verse 15, verse 15 and deliver them who through fear of 
death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Now he has delivered us and the devil will have no power. The demons will have no authority over your life, over any life here in Jesus' name. In John chapter 12, we're looking at verse 31. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. He will not torture you. He will not touch you. All his power destroyed out of our lives in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the commission for saints. Commission for saints to announce the atonement of Christ. In Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 18, And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself, by Jesus Christ. Now you understand, by that blood he shed, by the death he died, by the atonement he made, he has now reconciled us by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reading from verse 19, verse 19 says, to which that God was in Christ, reconciling the world, those who believe, those who repent and believe, unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He says, go and announce that Christ paid it all. Everyone can come now, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord now shall be saved, because now he commits to us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, verse 22, it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. We now stand in the position of Christ, in the room of Christ, and what Christ would have done after he died on the cross and he rose again to now go from city to city and from place to place and to say, I died for you already. I bore your punishment already. I've made the atonement for you, but you still have to come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Instead of doing, doing that himself, he now makes us to do it in his room. In his stead, he says, we plead with you, we beseech you, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. That's why he told us in Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15, and he said unto them, as he says unto us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. In verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, even though the atonement has been made, even though he has shed his blood, even though he has paid the whole price, everyone must still believe in a personal way because he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17, in verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. All these things are in the atonement. All these things he has sacrificed for, he has paid for, and he says in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 and they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly sin it shall not hurt them they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover verse 19 in verse 19 so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God and in verse 20 it says in verse 20 and they went forth 
all the people, the believers, and they went forth, Stephen, Philip, and they went forth, the apostles, they went forth, the believers that the signs will follow. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word, their word was signs following. And the people of God say, Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 4. In Acts chapter 8, verse 4, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Verse 5, in verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, as he preached the word, And the people with one accord give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7, it says, For clean spirits crying with loud voice came out, of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies that and that were lame were healed. In verse 8, it says, And there was great joy in that city. Tonight, great joy in our church, great joy with you. And as you go out announcing the atonement of Christ, everywhere you go joy, salvation, healing, deliverance, and as we go to Bomoshaw next weekend, joy everywhere in Jesus' name. Rise up and confirm and affirm that in your prayer. Pray from the depth of your heart. The atonement has now been made. And because the atonement has been made, there's no need, there's no problem that will not be solved. Salvation, healing, deliverance everywhere. Take the message out. Announce it everywhere. Christ paid it all and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and healed and delivered in Jesus name